Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world, and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. Foggy mask, can't see. Oh, I've lost my goggles. Oh, can't oh. see either. This is why to see clearly underwater, you've got to have a well-fitting mask, or one that's really clear. And even then, what you see underwater is still distorted. I'll prove a point. Jem? Yeah. What colour are my shorts? Oh, I don't know. I'm too busy looking at the fishes. OK, I'll do a little dive. Yeah. Have a look and just tell me what colour they are. Oh, brown. Definitely brown, brown yeah. Are you sure? Tell you what, I'll dive down. You have another look. <laughs> ah, OK. They're red. Here comes the science bit. Now, the reason they're red is because the further down you go, the more colours disappear. What do fish see, then? Well, patterns and colours that we wouldn't be able to see. They have either really weird or amazing eyesight, and some have bizarre ways of checking each other out. Which leads us very nicely to today's Barney's Barrier Reef. I see you, baby. Shaking that tail. <laughs> Our first super sighted species is this little fellow, the damselfish. And damselfish are hard to miss, they're very colourful. But if fish can see so well, why do they need to be so bright? I mean, they look good, but why else? Well, it's mainly so they can tell friends from enemies. Oh, I guess it's a bit like an outfit worn by a whole team or something. Exactly, like a football strip. Obviously that tells us whether someone supports your team or the opposition. It's a bit similar. This team might play for Chelsea FC, for example. Or Swimmerpool United. <laughs> But these markings are a little more crucial to their survival than football shirts, I imagine. Yeah, which is why some fish or species have a whole different level of vision that really gives them an idea of who's on their team and who definitely isn't. Don't they just see lots of yellow fish? Because that's all I can see. Well, this is the underwater world we're talking about here. <laughs> You've heard of UV light, yeah? Yep, it stands for ultraviolet. It's the light from the sun that sun lotion protects us against. Exactly, well done. Well, damselfish can actually see ultraviolet light, and each fish has special markings in ultraviolet that only the others can see. Oh, my brain hurts. You've lost me. It is a bit technical. Watch this. This is how we see the damselfish. Ah, oh, pretty, but quite plain, though. Exactly. But this is how damselfish might see other damselfish. Can you see all those patterns? Oh, yeah. So that's their individual football strip. Exactly. Cool, isn't it? So our delightful damselfish see patterns that we can't see at all through their unbelievable ultraviolet eyes. Cool, eh? OK, my turn. Here's our super sight contender, <laughs> number two. Wake up, mate. Oh, don't mind us. We're only presenting a TV show. That's better. Ah, the crocodile. Or should I say, croc eye dial. <laughs> Am I to understand from that extremely rubbish joke that you know all about his eyesight? Yep. This is a saltwater croc, or salties, as the Aussies like to call them. They have pretty good eyesight both above and below water, which is partly what makes them so deadly. Not forgetting the fact that one croc can weigh as much as 15 people. And they wouldn't be so good at hunting if they couldn't see so well now, would they? So what's their secret? OK, there's one eyelid at the top, Here's another eyelid at the bottom. OK, so far so normal. And here is a third eyelid. Ah, a third eyelid? That's weird. Why does he need three? The third one is known as a nictating eyelid, which means blinking eyelid. Show off. <laughs> it's a clear eyelid that cleans the eye with fluid from the croc's tear ducts. Ever heard the phrase crocodile tears? I have. Oh, OK, so crocodiles do cry. Yes, but not because they're sad. They're just washing their eyes, but the eyelids help them see clearer both on land and underwater. So they can stay very still doing their impression of a log until they're ready to strike. Uh, goodbye, cute animal. That was a wallaby. You're right there, that was a wallaby. Can we see that again? Its most powerful form of attack is called a death roll, where he grabs his prey and rolls it underwater. And nothing is safe from this big guy. I bet he eats anything. 
Yep, anything and everything, including humans, if we get too close. Well, I won't be paddling in Crocodile Creek. They don't have a real taste for humans, but can be aggressive. One croc hassled some fishermen so much he had to be locked in a police cell to calm down. Oh, come on, no way. Crocodile criminals, if you ask me, their super strong jaws, their super size and their speed are enough without the extra help on the eyesight front. Their third eyelid gives them heaps of advantages both above and underwater. Oh, this is getting embarrassing. Those damselfish can see better than us as well. Yep, the damselfish and crocodile are connected because they have superhuman sight underwater. OK, so who's our next super-sighted sea dweller? <laughs> Well, I couldn't resist this beautiful, graceful turtle. Look at him go. Definitely one of the reef's best swimmers. Oh, tell me about it. These guys can swim more than 2,000 kilometres in one go. That's like swimming all the way around England and Scotland. Yeah, in the water they can see really well, much better than us, with a special spherical eye lens which they need to see their food. So they must qualify as one of the best ocean lookers. Not that kind of looker, obviously. Well, it all goes swimmingly for the turtles until they hit dry land. Why, what happens then? Well, they're a bit rubbish, really. They become short-sighted and tend to have a habit of not looking where they're going. Oh, well, I would offer to give them a lift Ooh. back up, but they weigh 160 kilograms. That's the same as 40 cats. Or one very big one. So how do they link to the sharp-eyed croc? Well, they're connected because they can both see above and below water. OK, so turtles have a mini link to the croc, but who's our main croc connection? <laughs> Hang on, where's all the water gone? These are mangroves. They're kind of small forests near the edge of the barrier reef. They help hold the coastlines and islands together and stop dirt spilling into the ocean. What are you looking at? More importantly, what are we looking at? Is it a shrimp, a newt, a fish? Yes. He is a mudskipper. Now, these truly are fish out of water. Hey. He's a fish, but they live out of water for most of the time. They have this cool technique of holding water in their mouth and gills, which allows them to breathe on land. They can also breathe through their skin. Breathe through their skin. Now, that's a new one. Well, for fish, they're pretty rubbish at swimming, and that's why they do this weird skip-hop movement. Aha! Mud skippers. OK, now I get it. See, there you go. And if they were held underwater, some could actually drown because they need air to breathe. That is so weird. I've never heard of a fish that's scared of water. But, Gem, the best thing about these guys? Their eyesight. And they certainly have big eyes for little creatures. They're funny-looking things, aren't they? With their fat necks and googly rainbow-coloured eyes. And those googly rainbow eyes are on stalks. They have 200-degree vision of the world. In other words, they can see in panoramic vision. You mean they can basically watch their own backs? Yeah, without even a tiny turn of the head. And, like the croc, their eyes are designed to see both under and above the water. Cool for a critter about 100,000 times smaller than the croc. <laughs> The mantis shrimp cleaning out his hole again. He's a busy little thing, isn't he? Oh, look, he's waving. Hello. Hello. As well as being the ocean's tidiest creature, take a close look and you'll find out that he's not just any old shrimp. Well, this one looks like an alien from a certain angle. Those eyes may look like mini microphones. <laughs> testing, testing. But they're busy checking out everything around them. He has the eyesight that superheroes could only dream of. Each eye can move on its own, and they have 360-degree vision so they can see all around them. Each has three pupils. With these, he can see things broken down into three overlapping fields of vision. Do you know what, Gem? His eyes are so super techno, he can't even fit them in his head. It's the central pupil that has the real supervision. It scans an area and colours the image in and kind of refreshes the other two pupils, so they work well together as a kind of team super eye. And what's more, his world is in proper Technicolor. Now, we see the world through three different colour palettes, and so we would see that bird in the tree like this. Now, when it comes to shrimps, they have 12 different colour palettes, and it's virtually impossible to work out exactly what they see, but it could be something like this. So, if my mathematical calculations are correct, he sees things at least four times better than we do. They can see colours we don't even know exist. Wow. I guess it might be like kind of watching HD TV in 3D vision. Yeah, kind of. Although we'll probably never know exactly how they see the world. 
and combine this superpower with a punch faster than a speeding bullet makes this super shrimp small but pretty deadly. As this crab is about to find out. Not only does he have the best eyesight in the ocean, but one of the best in the animal kingdom. Not bad for something which grows to about the size of a pencil. If this shrimp was human, he'd be a superhero or a supervillain. Or very, very scary and kill us all. Yeah. And you thought the mud skipper was cool because he could see all around him. So our super seeing shrimp is connected to the panoramic mud skipper through his amazing superhuman eyesight. Step up our next contender. From a shrimp with superpower sight to the pistol shrimp that can barely see. That's the wonderful and weird world of the ocean for you. Are you sure he can't see? He's making a good job of digging up the sand for something with no eyesight. Well, that's only because he has his buddy, the goby fish, keeping watch for him. What? The fish and shrimps are mates. I thought the fish were just hanging out. No, these two are busy mates. The shrimp lives in a burrow in the sand, along with the goby. Looks like the shrimp's doing all the work, though. Well, the goby's watching for danger. That's why he's nicknamed the Watchman Goby. The shrimp has really bad eyesight, so the goby does the seeing for him. Assuming they can't speak, well, you never know in this weird, watery world, how does the shrimp know what's going on if he can't see? Well, the shrimp contacts the goby using his antennae, and when danger approaches, the goby flicks the shrimp with his tail, and they both dive for cover in the hole. But he's not as brave as our boxing mantis shrimp, though, is he? So our shrimp is connected to our shrimp. One has superhuman sight, but the other uses his mate to help him see. Time for a reef cap of our creatures who see and want to be seen. So we started at the damselfish and got all the way to the blind pistol shrimp. Let's talk about the damselfish, Gem. What makes these guys stand out so clearly to their mates? Easy, their beautiful ultraviolet markings. Amazing. Ah, yes. But what's so special about our croc eye dial? That's the second time you've used that joke and probably that's two times too many. Well, our crocodile here has a third eyelid, isn't that right? Yes. And that means they can see above and under the water, is that true? Yes. Like the turtle, but bless him, he's rubbish on land. OK, who came next? Easy, the big-eyed and fat-necked tiny mud skipper with his panoramic vision of land and sea. Your turn. OK, um, next was one of the shrimps. Oh, yeah, the mantis shrimp with his 3D super-colour vision, ludicrously good for a shrimp. Which leaves us with our badly-sighted pistol shrimp, who relies on his buddies, the goby, to tell him when he's in danger. Quite a selection. Whoever next? I don't know. Silent, ghostly, and deadly. I'm scared. One of the most venomous creatures in the world, the box jellyfish. Get out of the water, bikini lady! Box jellies are practically invisible to us, which is not so good when you're paddling. They have 5,000 million stinging barbs, 60 tentacles and 24 eyes. 24? Why so many? All the better to see you with. They have eyes all around their head. So they really do have eyes in the back of their heads? And the sides. Oh, great. You really don't want something that has 5,000 million chances of stinging you to be able to see you from every angle. What's doubly weird is that despite the fact they don't have a brain, they have a pair of eyes on each of their four sides that are really similar to human eyes. They have a lens, retina and iris. It's a bit of a scientific puzzle. No brain, but eyes that can see really well. Oh, I don't understand. You're not the only one. It's one of those ocean mysteries. OK. Now, this is how they might see, and this is a close-up of a jellyfish eye. Ooh, weird or what? I mean, I always thought they were just jelly-like floaty things. Far from it. But because box jellies use vision to hunt, they're a bit lost at night, and that's the best time to find them sleeping. That's crazy. Box jellies have 24 eyes, and mantis shrimps have three pupils in each eye. So the box jelly must be connected to the mantis shrimp, because they both have multiple eyes. <laughs> Aha, the octopus, or Oki, as I like to call him. Um, where's he gone? Hello, I'm here, but have decided to change colour. Oh, and again. It must be great fun to be able to change colour all the time. It looks like he's just showing off. Well, actually, he's just blending in with his surroundings. He's saying, I'm not here. No, really, I'm not here. Go away. So why does he turn red? He's not blending in now, is he? Well, now he's saying, OK, so you found me, but leave me alone. Are you saying he's talking through his colour change? Nah, don't believe you. No, it's true. He communicates through his skin. Hello. But what's even better is that he also sees through it. 
He sees through his skin. Now you're really winding me up. OK, well, maybe not sees through his skin, because that's what his eyes are for, but they can't see colour. Well, how can they blend into a background, then, if they don't know what colour the background is? Well, they can feel different colours through their skin, and that's how they know how to change, like this guy here. His skin is so sensitive he knows exactly when to change colour and when to set off his colour alarm bell. The yellow and blue means, back off, Buster, I'm angry. Wow, this guy really does look angry, then. Look at his blue rings, they're so bright. They look like they have glitter on them. And this is one octopus you really don't want to get on the wrong side of, the blue-ringed octopus, one of the most venomous creatures in the world. Now, those flashing blue rings mean back off now. In fact, don't even think about it. I am very, very dangerous. Help! So, it's a bit like us going red in the face when we're angry. Yeah, well, apart from the venomous bit. So, we had the blobby box jellyfish followed by the wobbly octopus. Exactly. Oki and box jelly are linked by their wobbly soft bodies. OK, my turn. Now you think you've seen weird, try this geezer. <laughs> Our next creature is a cephalopod. A whatlopod? Are you sure it's alive, by the way? A cephalopod, and yes, it's alive. In fact, his relatives have been alive for the last 100 million years. 100 million? You must have a good moisturiser. <laughs> this is a nautilus, one of the ocean's most ancient creatures. Well, it's very weird, and you still haven't told me what it is. A cephalopod. It means head foot. They're mollusks, soft, squishy animals whose heads are attached to their modified feet. Uh, I'm afraid I can't make head and a foot of this. <laughs> well, it's all tucked into the shell, and they do have a head because that's where their eyes are. They don't look like they've got good eyesight, though. Look at them bobbing around like that. Well, it's amazing these guys can see it all. For starters, they're very old and could see pretty much before anything else could see. And secondly, they live up to 600 metres deep. Wow, that's like twice as high as the Empire State Building. I know. So they live in the dark and they've hardly evolved since they first existed, but they can still see. How? Well, it's through a very small eye formed like a little pinhole camera. They don't see well, but then they are getting on a bit. Their eye doesn't see in focus because it has no lens, but it allows them to see their food, the little animals that glow in the dark. So basically, they're weird floating ancient shells that developed an eye like a pinhole camera long before cameras were even invented. That's kind of weird. Yeah, and guess what? Octopuses are cephalopods too. OK, so the octopus is linked to the ancient Nautilus because they're both headfoots. Cool. <laughs> These are giant clams. They look even bigger when they're open. They can weigh the same as three grown men. They're mollusks, so they're related to the slugs and snails. OK, so they're part of the squishy, slimy family. Well, they're squishy on the inside, but not on the outside. No one really hunts these guys when they're this big, which is probably why they can live to more than 70 years old. Whoa, that's impressive. A pensioner clam. But that's not the best bit. They have not one, not two, but hundreds of eyes. Do you know what? I think we might need the assistance of Dr Barnacles. OK, here's the science bit. Listen and learn. Clams are home to the zooxanthellae. Why do they have to make these names so complicated to pronounce? The zoo what? The zooxanthellae, Gemma. They're tiny plants that live in several types of animals exposed to the sun, which makes them solar-powered. Can we just call them zoos? Sure. So, to give the zoos, as we call them, the light they need, the clams push their colourful lips outside their shell into the sunlight. That leaves their delicate inside tissue exposed to any fish wanting a nibble. But the clam has these clever cells that can tell slight little light changes. Ah, like eyes. Yes, well, very basic eyes, but basic's fine when you have hundreds of them. When they see a shadow of a passing predator, the clam pulls itself in and, just to be on the safe side, pushes water out of its siphon. Ah, and I thought that was his bottom. How come we don't have hundreds of eyes? They'd come in really useful, I think. The ancient Nautilus has simple eyes too. So the clam is connected to the Nautilus because they both have very basic eyes, but they're not the only link to our Nautilus shell. During the day, the Barrier Reef is a cheerful place, full of animals going about their business, from the weird and wacky and playful to the craziest colours. But once night falls, it's a whole different ocean. And this is when the night owls come out to play. Or in the case of these white-tipped sharks, to hunt. The white tips are one of the reef's most common sharks. They're asleep during the day. 
which is why the reef looks a lot happier then. They have complete night vision. During the day, the pupil in their eye is small to restrict the amount of light coming through. But at night, the pupil gets much larger to allow more light in so they can see more. And allow them to spot any prey that was silly enough not to go to bed earlier. Now, sharks are twice as good as cats at seeing in the dark. They may only be able to see in black and white, but their clever eyes allow them to use the moon, stars or any available light to get around. White tips have clever ocean eyes that don't need light to see, just like the Nautilus. So they must be connected to the Nautilus as they can both see in the dark. Let's catch up on our ocean wonders so far. Time for another reef cap. So, our super-sighted shrimp is linked to another creature with superhuman sight. I'm going to give you a clue. He's deadly and invisible. Easy. The box jellyfish, with 24 eyes. Far more than he needs, I'm sure. But who is the box jelly's wobbly connection? The octopus. He sees through his skin. Weird, but pretty cool, I think. OK. Our Nautilus is connected by the fact that he's also just a head and a foot. Head foot. Mm. Barney, please tell, what's the proper name for a head foot? Right, that is um, cephala thing. Cephala... Cephala... Cephala something. Cephalopod. Yes, that's it. Fail. Oh, no, no, but I do remember that the Nautilus also has a mini link to the clam, both with basic but effective eyesight. Our main Nautilus link is, of course, the shark. Both are insomniacs and can see in the dark. So, who's our next visionary wonder, I wonder? <laughs> Hey, are we still in the ocean? Where's the sea gone? Have you switched the lights off, Jen? No, we're still in the ocean depths. This is the flashlight fish, named after flashlights because they flash their lights at each other. A bit like this. This means hello, Chuck. What you can see glowing is bioluminescent pouches underneath the eyes. The fish use their glow to find food and communicate with each other. Incoming transmission. Well, can they turn it off? Yeah, handy, eh? They have a lid that can cover their glowing pouch, otherwise predators would gobble them up easily. So they see by flashing each other, a bit like having your own car headlights. Cool. It's no wonder they can see so well at night. A bit like the white tip reef shark that hunts at night, remember? I get it. Flashlight fish see perfectly well in the dark, which connects them to the white tip reef shark. <laughs> wow, who's this crazy colour changer? This is a cuttlefish. Like the octopus, he uses colour change to communicate. Well, it looks like he's talking pretty quickly then. It's giving me a headache. Well, the difference between the octopus and the cuttlefish is that he is a total show off. <laughs> I just wish he'd make his mind up what colour he wants to be. Well, cuttlefish certainly make use of their colour-changing skills. They use it to blend in, but also to chat and flirt. Flirt? Yep. The males have a moving, rippling colour running down their back. That's them trying to get the attention of the females, and it definitely works. It's slightly hypnotic. Look into my eyes. Or rather, look into my ripples. And looks like the females are saying, I see you, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it works OK, as you can see by the face sucking going on. But I can't see how they're all linked to the flashlight fish. It's easy. They both use vision to communicate the cuttlefish through colour effects and the flashlight fish by flashing their little torches. Thanks for clearing that up. OK, next. <laughs> Why, Mr Fish, what a big mouth you have. He's called the Napoleon Rass, or the Humphead Rass. Ah, he has got a hump head. In fact, I couldn't have put it better myself. So what's so special about this geezer, apart from the fact he must have the biggest gob in the ocean? Well, he's another ocean flirt. He blushes when he fancies a female. Ah, oh, so he has got a soft side. He doesn't look the romantic type. What's weird about these guys, or girls, should I say, is that they all start out as females. Hey, how does that work? Well, they all live under the protection of one male, who kind of looks after them all. And then he chooses who he wants to mate with. Huh, lucky him. And when the males want to flirt, their hump darkens. I suppose you could say they wear their heart on their hump. Well, I guess it's a different way of saying, I fancy you. 
It's like the dazzling cuttlefish who also uses colour to get attention. So our romantic but not so handsome Napoleon Rass is connected to the cuttlefish as both like to flirt and communicate using colour change. So who's our next visual wonder? <laughs> You don't often get the chance to use the phrase, I've got you stuck to my face. Jem, have you changed the show to make it all about romance? There's even more fish flirting going on. Or are they stuck together? Nothing to do with me. They are cute, though. I think they're dancing cheek to cheek. Or maybe the little one's just a little too forward. The big one could be saying, yeah, back off, lass, give me some space. Well, they're flirting, actually. Not very subtle, is it? The reason they recognise each other, though, is because they change colour from babies, who are this colour, to females who end up looking like this. But even stranger, they all change colour again when they're older and turn into a male. What? So the females change colour and then into men? Well, that's weird. I know. This is another example of how fish recognise each other. They know who to hook up a mate with and when to do it. Clever, eh? Colour change links the parrotfish back to our blushing Napoleon wrasse. And this links us right back to our first contender, the damselfish, who recognise each other through their ultraviolet markings, which only they can see. What a cool collection of connections. Let's see those again. <laughs> I agree. Very good. <laughs> OK, first up, damselfish and crocodiles are connected because they both see better than humans. The turtle was next, a mini-connection, because they can see both hey. above and below water, like the croc. But not as well on land. Your turn. Um, I need a clue. Ah, the mudskipper with his 200-degree panoramic vision. Linked to our other super-sighted little guy, the mantis shrimp. Hello. Followed by the pistol shrimp, another mini-connection. They can't see as well, but they have their mates, the goby fish, to give them a hand. So, who's next? Uh, the octopus? Nope, another wobbly animal, though. Ah, the box jelly, of course. Deadly, venomous and with 24 eyes. The next connection is the octopus, who talks by changing colour. And he is a cephala... Cephalopod. Finally, you've got it! One of them. Thank you. Yeah! The Nautilus, as old as the ocean, but can still see in the dark through his pinhole camera eye. And it's linked to the clam with the hundreds of basic eyes. A mini connection because our night hunter, the shark, can also see in the dark. Like the flashlight fish. And they are connected to the cuttlefish as they both use flashy visual techniques to communicate. So we are left with our two flirters, <sighs> the Napoleon Rass, another colour communicator. And last but not least, the smoochy parrotfish. They stick together in more ways than one. Barney? Yeah? Are these yours? Oh, you found them? Cool. Well, I've confiscated them. I mean, fish might not see quite like we do, but with their super-sighted vision, I think they deserve better. Well, they're my favourites. Yeah.